pretty bad rap over the last couple of weeks, but there are some very capable, skilled ones out there. And as CNN's Marty Savage reports in depth today, there are a number of men and women ready to roll up their sleeves and get to work. Yeah, Roger, catch 289, turn right. A plane in trouble. I made it, I made it, I made it. Catch 289, it's has engine number two flame out. It's a 757. Catch 289, uh, Roger, stay intentions. Request immediate landing anywhere we can. With close to 200 people on board. Okay, so here's the deal. Red Pellad Palladino, right? Yep. <laughs> Red Palladino is the one who's handling this emergency. And what he's done is redirect the aircraft to where? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you might be wondering at this point, why would I be pestering an air traffic controller in the middle of a crisis? Well, that answer is easy. None of this is real. Welcome to Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Daytona Beach. Dubbed the Harvard of the Sky, it's final exams week. For these would-be air traffic controllers, their grade depends on how well they handle everything thrown at them. Realism is what you're after. That's exactly what we're after. Right? In the scenarios, in the training, and all that. That's, that's correct. Uh, our, we want our students to be as fully prepared when they get to the field as possible. For these soon-to-be graduates, it's taken four years working in classrooms and state-of-the-art simulators, not to mention $120,000 tuition to get this far. You're one zero at one four. Miranda Blackwelder has learned all aspects of the job, from takeoffs and landings like to guiding flights cross-country. So what about the stress? That's the first thing everybody says, and it's like, well, yes, but what job isn't stressful? Like a number of students, Murray Best started off wanting to be a pilot. Then he got a taste of controlling planes and liked it. You ever make mistakes? Uh, plenty of times. Do you learn from the mistakes? Uh, definitely. Definitely. Because uh, I know that if I made the same mistake in the field, I'd lose my job. And I'd also be uh, responsible for uh, anybody that happened to get hurt. So, definitely serious. I asked Miranda if all the recent scrutiny on air traffic controllers had her rethinking her career choice. Do you feel good about the job? I do feel good about the job. I feel very confident. I'm very happy about my decision to be going into this field. One day, likely to be guiding your flight. The class of 2011, feeling good about their future and sounding very much in control. Contact on one and there he is, Marty Savage, uh, at Daytona Beach, Florida, standing outside one of those classrooms. And Marty, you know, I know you mentioned this in the piece, but but in talking to some of these younger men and women about the, these reports, which, by the way, you talk to a lot of people, and, you know, there have been air traffic controllers falling asleep on the job for decades. Um, wh what do they say about all of this? Well, let me show you something real quick, and I'll answer that. Okay? We're at the air traffic control tower simulator here. Final exams we told you about. They're just finishing up an exam in here, and you look on this side, you basically can see Daytona Tower, or at least how it would look by computer simulation. On the other side of the room, all of these fine students get to play the role of the pilot. That's how they try to make it real. But getting back to your question, this has been a story that they've actually ripped from the headlines and then talked about in the classroom, what's going on with their traffic controllers across the country. And here's the takeaway they get from that. There are 15,000 air traffic controllers in this system, less than a handful that have had serious problems in any way, shape, or form. So what they say is that that in no way really diminishes the overall quality of the industry. It's just a few bad people, and you'll find them in every kind of job. But here's one area where they sometimes differ from what is the standard line from the National Transportation Safety Board or the federal government, that being the rest periods. They believe, what the FAA says it doesn't believe in, that there should be rest periods. Those that work late overnight hours, kind of like long-haul pilots. When they work, there's another crew that sleeps. They believe that it might be wise to have some controllers on the job, others resting. That way everybody stays sharp. Marty Savage, you didn't even have to write it for you, and that's the perfect segue for me to my next story here. Marty, thank you, by the way. Uh, so, to Marty's point, if pilots, if doctors, you know, have these mandatory sleep times, should air traffic controllers follow the same rules? Coming up next, I'll speak with someone who testified on this very debate on Capitol Hill. And